Okay, everybody, Ben Stowe here, and we are going to go where no one has dared to go before. We are going to do a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back shootout between the FBT CS1000, the RCF Evox 8 version 2, and the EV Evolve 50. Now, personally, I love all three of these speakers, and we're a dealer for all three of these speakers. So we're going to do this very scientifically and just lay the facts out there and let you decide who the winner for you would be. Okay, now in order to keep this as fair and equitable as we can, we drew names out of a hat to see which speaker we would talk about first. And again, we're going to talk about all three equally, and then we're going to compare them side by side by side. First, I want to just go through each one a little bit individually. And, uh, and first up, we have the EV Evolve 50. Okay, looking at the EV Evolve 50, one of the first things you noticed is you have a, a handle on the top, and you have handles on both sides, which makes it very easy to carry this around. Uh, so it's lightweight and easily maneuverable. The top elements, which we'll look at in a minute, come in a padded carrying bag. And uh, again, we'll take a look at that in a second. On the back, we see that we have a fairly robust and well-featured DSP. Uh, this gives us a variety of, of settings, uh, including separate subwoofer level control, EQ, some presets, turning uh, phantom power on and off. And uh, that is something that's unique here as well. We have two mic preamps, and they have phantom power available if you're using active DIs or condenser mics or something like that. Uh, we also have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input, and we have RCAs, as well as Bluetooth, streaming Bluetooth right to the device. Um, and then we can see a through on our first mic, and we see a mix output of our mixed level signals. Here we can see the, uh, the uh, convection cooling for the heat sink and a, a locking IEC connector. So those, that's kind of a basic overview of the features of the EV Evol 50. All right, now let's take a look at the RCF Evox 8 version 2. This is the brand new V2, which has updated firmware and new 2-inch drivers. It's notable that the uh, components should not be exchanged between version 1 and version 2. But again, since we're looking at the new Evolve, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were working with the most current things on the market. Um, so, and again, I really like all three systems. Uh, one of the first things that I notice about this is the, uh, the top actually stores with the unit. Uh, unfortunately, the pole and the cables do not. With the optional cover, then they will, uh, then they will uh, be stored in the cover. Uh, again, nice uh, solid steel grill. Uh, only one handle on this, though. Only a handle on the top, no handles on the side. Uh, getting into the uh, feature set back here, we have an IEC input connector. We have a uh, single input uh, that is either mic or line switchable. There's our switch there. And we have a level control. And we have a, uh, a flat or boost um, switch. Um, and then we have a link out as either balanced XLR or quarter inch. And the signal is fed to the top via a uh, speak on connector. OK, and here we have the FBT CS1000. Uh, one thing that's particularly unique about this is everything is stored inside the box, everything. Uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, this has handles on the both sides, no handle on the top. Um, we, uh, another thing we see here is we have our uh, heat sink uh, for cooling, convection cooling, just the same as the other two. And uh, we see that we have uh, some recallable presets from this rotary selector. We have a sub-level control on this one. And we have a, uh, an overall level control. And we have a mic or line selectable input with a pass-through output. I'm going to try to set up all three of these systems quickly, efficiently, and equitably. Um, basically, I'm going to try to work at a, uh, at a comfortable but quick pace, but I'm not going to kill myself to do it here. All right? So with that in mind, let's start with the EV, and here we go. Well, that's it. We're done. Okay. Same as before. Here we go. Setting up the Evox 8.
And there you go. And here we go. And we're done. Okay, in the interest of fairness and equitability here, I want to take you through a quick look at the back of the speakers and show you the settings we're using. We're trying to keep thing, everything really uh, on an on a pl even playing field, a lot of parity. So if we take a look at the uh, FPT here first, We'll see that I've got it set at 0 dB, sub-level 0, preset 1, line level. Okay, taking a quick look at the uh, RCF Evox 8 version 2. Here we can see right here, it's the version 2. And here we have this. This doesn't have a, a dB indicator per se, but it does have a, uh, a center mark there that uh, we'll use as our zero dB point. And uh, we're going to have it in uh, regular flat configuration. Uh, and here we have our line level selected. And uh, that's where we'll be plugging in our, our connection in a moment. And then over here on the EV, uh, we'll see that again, we have it at zero dB. Uh, we'll go through our DSP menu and our sub-level is at, uh, at zero. We have nothing else set here for EQ. Phantom power is off, of course, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and one of the really neat things about this, I just want to focus on for a second, is that there's an app. And so I can connect to this speaker, and I can control it remotely. I've got EQ setting and everything else. There's my level setting. Uh, my EQ, and even a, uh, a clipping indicator. It'll let me know if there's a problem with the speaker, and we can do this up to six. So kind of a neat feature for that as well. Now, let's, uh, let's go to the mixing board, and I can show you what I've done there. And again, we'll try to keep this very, very even playing field. Okay, taking a quick look at our mixing board, what we've done here is I've set up two input channels, one that is coming from my computer, so that I can play music. Obviously, we want to know how it sounds with music. And then I've got an internal generator in this mixing board that's giving us pink noise, which is an equal, equal representation of audio energy at uh, all frequencies. And uh, then I've set up four identical matrices that is giving us the exact same output. And we can see the same level, same EQ. OK, nothing's EQ'd. Everything's flat. And the only thing that we've done different is I've put a 20 dB pad on the output for the reference signal because uh, that is going to my smart measurement box. And what that allows us to do, and here we can see our output channels. And what this allows us to do is to take and measure this signal. And what we're seeing in the blue here is the reference signal. So that is the signal that's being sent to the speakers. And right now we don't have them on. But this will allow us to compare with the yellow, which comes from our measurement microphone, which was just calibrated. Uh, and it's calibrated uh, perfectly for, for dB here. And uh, that will allow us to see how accurately the speaker is reproducing the signal we're sending to it. All right.
Okay, so there you have the results of the three running at zero dB, no boost, no attenuation, all equal output from the board. That's what we're gonna get. One of the things I wanna point out as we look at some of these spectral measurements is we have to factor the room into this a little bit. Now, this is about as real world as it gets. This is a real convention center ballroom where lots of wedding dances and things like that are held all the time. Uh, but we have to take that into equation that some of the things that are bouncing off the ceiling and the floor are gonna be factoring into those measurements a little bit. The thing is though, all three speakers are working in the exact same environment. So what we're seeing is what's being delivered to the audience. And the microphone measurement point is 25 feet. So I wanted to give it adequate distance for everything to mature from the loudspeakers and get a very realistic measurement here in the real world. But that's just the zero dB measurement. Now we wanna see what happens when we really push down the gas pedal. So we're gonna put some hearing protection in a poor unsuspecting NLFX marketing person and send them back to the speakers and let us know. Now the EV speaker, mind you, I can watch for a limit on my phone, but the other two, they have a limit indicator on the back of the speaker. So we're gonna send somebody back there to see what happens when they limit and we'll get a measurement at the limit point. We'll take a look at what's happening to the frequency response and how loud we can get. So there we saw how all the loudspeakers perform at peak output. Now let's see how they perform at the extremes of their pattern coverage. That is, how wide does the sound come out of the loudspeaker? Now the RCF and the EV both advertise 120 degrees of horizontal coverage, and the FBT advertises 110 degrees of horizontal coverage. We kind of had to pick a point, so we're going to go with the 120 degree that the other two models have and just see how each model performs at that extreme. Here we see the FBT CS1000, and the pink represents a snapshot of its straight on response when the measurement mic was straight out from the speaker at 25 feet, and the green represents a snapshot of the measurement we took at 120 degrees. And what we'll notice is the really substantial decline on the high frequency. Uh, you can see it really scoops out there. Now, we knew that this speaker was only rated for 110 degrees and that this measurement is taken at 120. Uh, frankly, I would have hoped for a little better, uh, but here you can see, and this is pretty typical actually, uh, when manufacturers say that a speaker is 120 degrees, often it's not exactly the same at 120 degrees. With the EV Evolve, notably, when we look at the same things, where the orange represents the snapshot we took at uh, straight on, and the pink represents the measurement at 120 degrees, this actually really does a very nice job. It's pretty much exactly the same at 120 degrees as it is straight on, which again, isn't common. So uh, we have to give kudos to Evie here. I think probably the waveguide that they put over the drivers really helped out in this area. And with the RCF Evox 8, we see a little bit of reduction in the low frequency, which kind of surprised me. Uh, usually low frequency patterns are a bit more spherical and we see a more gentle tapering off of the high frequency, which is a little more typical of what we see with most loudspeakers advertising 120 degrees. So it's not exactly the same at 120 degrees as it is straight on. The high frequency certainly does taper off, um, but it's, it's really pretty good. Uh, and, and it was certainly usable at 120 degrees. Here we see all three loudspeakers with their comparisons against the on-axis measurement and the 120 degree measurement. And where I think it's really important to go with this is not to compare the loudspeakers against each other, but to compare each loudspeaker with itself. Is what we hear directly on axis the same as what we hear at 120 degrees? And, and what is that difference? So really, we're just comparing each loudspeaker to itself. But this gives us a summary look of all three. Here's a summary rundown of the three systems we're looking at today. Only the EV has phantom power on the microphone preamps, and only the EV has a built-in multi-channel mixer. Phantom power is really handy if you want to use things like condenser microphones or active direct boxes. The FPT and the RCF both feature in-box storage. The FPT and the EV have separate 
subwoofer level control. Only the EV has Bluetooth streaming capability for music and a Bluetooth app uh, to allow you to control the speaker remotely. Only the EV has an onboard DSP, although the FBT does have the recallable presets we looked at earlier on the rotary encoder. The FBT and the RCF both have a swivelable top. EV includes a carry bag for the top elements and cables. The FBT and the RCF allow you to adjust the height with the pole. EV does offer a different size pole, but it's not adjustable. And the FBT is the only one that offers you an adjustable tilt and is arrayable, where multiple top elements can be arrayed together. So there you have it. There's a side-by-side, by-side comparison uh, of three speakers. Like I said, at the end of the day, we really like all of them. Uh, we did a music listing test as well, but due to the copyright restrictions on channels like YouTube, we can't play that for you. So I'll create a private video, and if you request it, I'll send you a link, and you can listen to that. Uh, I, I definitely came away with a clear winner in my mind, but, um, you know, I think if you put 10 sound guys in a room, you get 11 different opinions. So I'm not going to tell you which one I like the best. I want you to look at the specs and decide which one's best for you. Um, you know, again, it's, it's your rig, uh, and, and it's for your gigs. Uh, that said, um, pros and cons for each, um, all three, I think great speakers at the end of the day. So with that, please send questions and comments. As long as none of them are about my cable management, we did this video really quick for you, uh, and I appreciate you watching.